Notre Dame has had some good quarterbacks over the years, and the Fighting Irish never fail to attract big-name quarterback recruits to the South Bend. From the golden arm of Jimmy Clausen to most recently Tyler Buckner, the Irish have always had the ability to recruit and produce good quarterbacks. Unfortunately, they also produce a good amount of bust, as Clausen, Deshaun Kaiser, and Everett Golson all fail to make it in the NFL. But we are forgetting one of the biggest quarterback busts of all time, Brady Quinn. Quinn was a big-time recruit coming out of high school, and he set 36 Fighting Irish records, was a Heisman finalist, and won the Golden Arm Award after that concluded his four seasons with the team. He became a first-round pick, was one of the best players in Notre Dame history, and was expected to be the next great guy to come out of the Irish program, but that did not exactly happen. Today, we're going to talk about the rise of Brady Quinn, his illustrious Notre Dame career, and what ultimately went wrong for the former college football superstar. But before we get into that, if you love consistent quality college football content, this is 100% the channel for you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any more college football content, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. If you want to support today's video, be sure to hit that like button as it really helps with the algorithm so more people can see it, suggest what player I should take a look at next, and check out my playlist with all my other What Happened To videos and all my other series as that comment is pinned down below. Now let's get started and talk about what happened to Brady Quinn. Today I'm joined by my good friend Jackson from JEM Live, so be sure to check out his channel and subscribe as I'd really appreciate that. We first need to go back in time and talk about how Brady Quinn became a big time name to begin with. Hailing from Dublin, Ohio, which is a suburb of Columbus, Quinn grew up loving football from a young age and took a liking to the quarterback position. He eventually attended Dublin Kaufman High School, and as a junior in 2001, he threw for over 2,000 yards and 21 touchdowns, and they went 9-4. and four. As a senior in 2002, he threw for over 2,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, with 6 more rushing touchdowns, and at this point, he became a big-time recruit, had almost 5 stars, and would play in the Army All-American game. But where would he go was the big question. It would come down to three schools, Notre Dame, Michigan, and Ohio State. The Buckeyes were close to home, they had recently won a national title, and he loved the coach who recruited him, Luke Fickle. Michigan had a history of good quarterbacks, he loved Tom Brady, and they had an academic program he wanted to be a part of. He loved the feel at Notre Dame, they had a rich history of quarterbacks there, and they had a great academic program. So all three were an option, but he would ultimately decide to commit to the Fighting Irish. Some may be asking, how does a blue chip quarterback recruit from Columbus spurn the Buckeyes? Well, here's what Quinn had to say about that. Quote, to come full circle as far as my decision and not to go with Ohio State, I think one of the things that was concerning me for Ohio State was their track record at that point of sending quarterbacks to the NFL. That narrative still seemingly exists today, as many people love to joke that Ohio State can't put a quarterback in the NFL, and currently Justin Fields is battling that. Nevertheless, Quinn arrived in South Bend with high expectations and the ability to play right away. According to 24-7 Sports, Quinn was a four-star recruit, the number five pro-style quarterback, and the 82nd best player in the class of 2003. The Irish started out pretty hyped up, but they needed a miraculous comeback to beat Washington State in week one, then they got shut out by Michigan, and the fan base called for the head of Irish starting quarterback Carlisle Holiday. Quinn was now thrusted into the starting position, and he struggled in his first start. In his first game against Purdue, he threw four picks and got sacked five times, and the Irish lost to the Boilermakers. On a side note, Purdue and Notre Dame play for the first time in years this upcoming fall, and I'm really excited, and I'll definitely be at that game. Quinn definitely learned a lot as a freshman, but it was a struggle. After a loss to Syracuse, the Irish would go 5-7, and, and this was only the 12th losing season in the history of Notre Dame football. Going into 2004, head coach Tyrone Willingham needed to have a big year, and he needed to deliver. With Quinn at quarterback, they upset Michigan, Michigan State, and Washington, and some were saying they were one year away from the title game, but Purdue would show up again. The Boilermakers quarterback Kyle Orton would torch the Irish, and they won in South Bend for the first time in nearly 30 years. Quinn wasn't super special the rest of the year, but he did throw three touchdown passes against Pittsburgh, and despite starting out 5-2, and two, they ended up going 5-6, and six, and Coach Willingham is fired after only three years. Quinn would throw for 2,372 yards, 15 touchdowns, and 9 picks, with three more rushing touchdowns on the ground, and he definitely was showing some promise. For the new head coach, the Irish wanted Utah's Urban Meyer, as he was part of the staff for a couple years, but he ended up choosing Florida over Notre Dame, and they instead brought in New England Patriots offensive coordinator Charlie Weiss to be the next head coach, and this would change the career trajectory of Quinn. In 2005, he'd lead them to wins over number 23 Pitt and number 3 Michigan in their first two games, before a crushing overtime loss to Michigan State, but in that game, he would shine as he threw five touchdowns. Facing his demons at Purdue, he finally beat them as he threw three touchdowns, and the number 23 Boilermakers went down. They lost by three at home in number one USC, but he rebounded with six touchdown passes against BYU. 
He then combined for seven more scores against Tennessee and Navy combined, and Quinn was quickly becoming a star. He finished with five combined touchdowns against Syracuse and Stanford, and the Irish had gone 10-2. They lost to Ohio State in the Fiesta Bowl, where Quinn would struggle, but he had a great year. He threw for 3,919 yards, 32 touchdowns, and only 7 picks, while establishing himself as a legit Heisman candidate going into the 2006 season. Going into that year, some said the Irish were the best team in college football, and they were featured on Sports Illustrated. They started out number 2 in the country, and they struggled to take care of Georgia Tech, but they won in a close one. He tossed 3 scores and a win over Penn State, before they got exposed by number 11 Michigan. Quinn bounced back though with 5 touchdowns against Michigan State and 4 more combined scores against Purdue and Stanford. If they wanted to potentially get to the title game, they'd have to win out and they almost blew a game to UCLA, but then he threw 11 combined touchdowns in their next 3 games against Navy, North Carolina, and Air Force and they had a chance. If they had any glimmer of hope of getting to that title game, Quinn would need to lead his team to a victory over number 3 USC and he seemingly could not beat the Trojans in the past and once again he could not get the job done and that small chance went out the window. They ended up having to settle for the Sugar Bowl against number 4 LSU, and that was the last game of his career as he tossed two touchdown passes in their loss, and it was a sad day for Irish fans. He became a Heisman finalist, won the Johnny Unitas Golden Arm Award, and was a second team All-American after he passed for 3,426 yards, 37 touchdowns, and only 7 picks. He broke 36 Notre Dame school records and went down in program history as one of the all-time greats. He was expected to be a first round pick in the 2007 NFL Draft, and he was going to have a great NFL career. But things didn't fully work out for him. Now I'm going to turn it over to Jackson to talk about what went wrong for Quinn at the next level, and enjoy the rest of the video. Thank you, Scott. Very quickly, if you guys haven't already subbed to Scott's channel, you absolutely should. This is a great place for consistent, high quality football content. So looking at Brady Quinn, to put it nicely, he didn't work out in the NFL. Coming out of Notre Dame, the Browns drafted him with the 22nd overall pick in the first round, and Browns fans were very excited for him. He was a poised pocket passer, he had the build and could run a little bit, and he was a hometown kid. The Browns were coming off a 4-12 record, and it was going to be a quarterback competition to see who could get the starting job. He was actually the third string quarterback going into his rookie year in 2007. Backup Charlie Fry was traded, making Brady Quinn the backup, but Derek Anderson was actually doing a very good job with this bad team. He led them to a 10-5 record as a starter before injuring his wrist before the last game. This is where we'd get to see Brady Quinn in action for the first time. Would this be the handing of the torch to the hometown hero? Well, he didn't do too much to make the decision easy for the coach. He went 3-8 of eight with no touchdowns, but finishing the season 10-6 was a huge step for the this team, and you really can't judge a guy on just 8 passes. But the 2008 season rolled around, they traded but re-signed Derek Anderson, making him the starter. They got out to a poor 3-5 and five record, and head coach Romeo Cornell made Brady Quinn the starter in hopes to light the spark for the second half of the season. He lost his first game against the Broncos, but he was actually playing pretty well. But in the very next game, he hurt his finger and was trying to play through it, but got sidelined, had to get surgery, and was out for the year. But still, we only have a 4 game sample on this guy. We don't know how good he can be but he is a first round pick so I think Cleveland fans were still very optimistic. Leading in the next season the Browns changed head coaches and Quinn won the starting job only to be benched at halftime of game three. But he returned to be the starter after their bye week in week eight and continued to play mediocre football. This was the biggest sample size by far and it only proved Brown fans that he was everything they hoped he wouldn't be. A guy who completes around 50% of his passes and in 10 games he had eight touchdowns and seven interceptions. But four of those touchdowns came in one single game against the pathetic two and 14 Lions. The Browns have seen enough and traded Brady Quinn to the Broncos who must have liked what they saw in his one good game in his second year. They needed a quarterback because they knew they couldn't win with Kyle Orton, so they had a quarterback battle in the offseason, which Brady Quinn lost. He didn't play a single snap the entire year, and then the next year he didn't play at all either. Even when Kyle Orton got benched in 2011, they chose to go with Timmy Tebow. He went on to the Chiefs and only got playing time when the starters got hurt, but he was a mess. He couldn't stay healthy, and he was just bad, throwing only two touchdowns and eight picks in 10 games. 2013, he was signed and cut by the Seahawks, signed and released within five days of the Jets, picked up by the Rams, hurt himself in the weight room, and signed by the Dolphins after just signing a 
commentating contract with Fox, but released 15 days later. So that's the story of Brady Quinn's NFL career after a wildly successful career at Notre Dame. So what went wrong? Why did he never work out? In the beginning, it seems to be the theme of the Cleveland Browns just not being able to get the quarterback position right. But whose fault is it? Are they bad at scouting for talent and knowing who's going to work in the NFL? Or are the quarterbacks set up to fail in their organization? And the answer is yes. We've seen people like Johnny Manziel who are just obviously not ready for the NFL level. But we can look other places like the Texans where we see Deshaun Watson, a top five talent in the league, but they still had a 4-12 and record. So which one was Brady Quinn? He was thrown into a horrible situation, they had coaching changes, different offensive coordinators, and a bad offensive line. This is why I think Brady Quinn kept getting so many chances in the NFL. We all saw his talent in college, but there was always an excuse for him. Oh, he didn't have a good low line, maybe he'll work out here. Or oh, he wasn't healthy, so we really haven't seen him at his full potential yet. Well, eventually these excuses ran out for Brady Quinn. Whenever he got the starting role, even though he was in a bad situation, he just made it worse. He completed about 50% of his passes pretty consistently. He was the guy who would throw more interceptions than touchdowns, and he was made of glass. The turnover issues was a result of not being able to properly read NFL defenses, which can be fixed with hard work and just grinding in the film room. He didn't have a cannon for an arm or legs to make up for it, and he never refined his throwing mechanics and never put into the work to get better year in and year out. We can blame the beginning of his career for the Brown situation, but being injury prone is a trait whether we like it or not. Not being available for your team is a negative. He just always looked like a college quarterback in the NFL and never put in the work necessary to compensate to where he was limited physically. It's sad to see it all go down like this, but that is what went wrong with Brady Quinn in the NFL, and this is why he is known as one of the biggest busts as far as first round quarterbacks go. Thank you so much for having me on the channel, Scott. Back to you. Thank you, Jackson. That was a great analysis, and I appreciate you coming onto the channel for today's video. So yeah, Brady Quinn was one of the best quarterbacks in Notre Dame history, was a Heisman finalist, and a guy who was expected to do big things after he was taken in the first round, but unfortunately his career would never work out. This video has been requested a lot, and I had a lot of fun making this and researching this, and I never realized just how good he was at Notre Dame. He now does college football commentary, and he is seemingly happy with what he's doing, so props to Brady Quinn for making something of himself, despite not doing much in the NFL. Quinn was a great player, and I'm also really excited to see what the future holds for Notre Dame at the quarterback position, as they have a couple talented guys, and this year's quarterback battle is going to be a lot of fun. Before you go, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and check out all my other videos on the end screen, including my video about what happened to Deshaun Kaiser. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.